Okay. Hey, Matt. <laughs> what? Can I name them? Can you? No. Oh. I think they're eyes, ears, mouth, and nose. <laughs> What's that? Man, what kind, what kind of life is it where you know the names of Teletubbies? I don't know. <laughs> it's just sad. <laughs> What's that? Very, yeah. So, um, <laughs> this is an interesting passage. It's, it's like he, Paul, Paul wrote this passage to the church in Corinth, and he's really defining the church. If I had the kids here today, I would have had the little conversation with them about, uh, you know, what is the church? And hopefully they would have said, oh, it's this building. And, the, <laughs> and then I would have been able to correct them <laughs> and say, no, it's not the building. It's the people, right? Which all through the, the New Testament, the, the church is never, ever, ever once a building. It's always, 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 every single time, it is the people. So, that just, so Paul's emphasizing that. He, he doesn't even imagine the whole building idea. Whenever he talks about the church, the ecclesia, uh, and, and so for him, the, a synonym for that is the body of Christ, the body of Christ. So here he's going to take that metaphor and really hammer it down, <laughs> hammer it home, which we've, uh, as you will have picked up from that reading, he was doing. Now this is also, last week if you were here, uh, we were reading the passage before which talks about the, the spiritual gifts. And so this is actually right on, on the heels of that, spiritual gifts that, that according to Paul, says that all those who are in Christ are given spiritual gifts. So once we come to faith in Christ, faith in Jesus Christ, God also gives us uh, spiritual gifts. <coughs> I think I made him, I made him a, a, a techn te technical error, a linguistic error last week. Paul, did you pick up on that? Were you here? You were here. Do, do you remember this? I think I said it was charismati or something like that, but it was pneumati but was, was the, the word. So, so I take it back. My, my Greek is not very good. So the, the, the spiritual, so the spiritual gifts. But the word charisma is from the Greek, and it means, you know, kind of means gifts. So the, the, these, these gifts, which are um, kind of wild, pretty cool, actually. <laughs> Healing. Well, he says uh, uh, message of wisdom, message of knowledge, faith, special faith, gifts of healing, miracles, working of miracles, all those kinds of things. And it never says in the New Testament, oh, yeah, and by the way, those are done now that the apostles have gone, which... You know, there are some that believe that. You know, we could have a discussion about that, but I don't think it's true. <laughs> I think that, uh, that these carry on in the church today. Now, I think they get faked as well. So we see some really weird stuff if you watch, um, you know, televangelists and stuff like that. <coughs> Nancy, like my, she wants the gift of, what do you call it, wham? Bam, bam! bam. You can <laughs> slam somebody and they hit the ground and come up, stay down for a while. <laughs> yeah, Nancy, that's not a very nice thing to want. <laughs> I don't see Bam in the book, by the way. <laughs> um. <coughs> dear, dear, dear. Aw. Oh. Hmm? Ricola. I ran out of Ricola. I should pop one. I, I got one. I, got, I, didn't, I ran out of it in my mouth. I didn't run out of it in my pocket. <laughs> it's all on tape. Bevan, you have to edit this out. Um, oh, no. Okay. Actually, that's why people watch. They watch these hoping for some kind of glitchy, weird thing to happen. <laughs> so last week we talked about the gifts and there's this um, kind of key part here there are different kinds of gifts but the same spirit so it's the Holy Spirit uh, who, who distributes these gifts as he sees fit to do amongst the followers of Christ uh, the members of the body of Christ and then he says uh, there's all these different kinds of gifts and giftings then there, he says there are different kinds of service but the same Lord which I believe refers to Jesus. So there's different kinds of service. So the implication here is that the giftings are for service. So if you're getting a gift, you know, sometimes you see, you hear stories about people that feel they have the gift and they're like, it's all about me and my gift. Well, that would be wrong. <laughs> Since the gifts are for service, they're for serving others and taking care of other people. 
and serving God. So they're not for our own grandiosity. Is that a word? Yeah. And, and he says, but there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord, because the characteristic of Jesus, almost the defining characteristic in a sense, in his life and his ministry was, he said, I came here to serve, not to be served. And he who is our head, uh, who, who is the Lord of lords, king of kings, always serves. His, his heart and his, his manner, his demeanor is always for others, always for others. And of course, that's what he seeks to have um, demonstrated in the body, in the church of Christ. So he says, they're different. And, and so these gifts or giftings are for different kinds of service to each other. And he says, there are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all. Um, so that, that I, I kind of redefined that as activates them all last week. And then, as you will recall, those who were here last week, the title of the sermon was Activation. And uh, kind of like, you know, when you get your new MasterCard, and you have to call in and get it to work. It, it has power to buy, but not until you activate it. So, um, so you, you can have these gifts uh, and not actually have them particularly activated. You don't know you've got them. You haven't discovered them. Uh, and so that's something to think about. So I suggested last week that people prayerfully consider what your gift or gifting is from God and how you might use that better uh, to serve God, to serve Christ and his, his, his church and his mission to our world. So, so that, that was kind of a recap of last week. So this week is all about the metaphor of the body of Christ. <laughs> uh, a great metaphor. It's wonderful how the Bible has these metaphors that are timeless. <laughs> like Jesus talks about farming metaphors a lot. And Paul talks about things like the body. I mean, there's something that just never goes away. <laughs> they had bodies back in Paul's day. And we still have our bodies in our day. So we, we, can completely, uh, we can completely understand what he's talking about. And ever since, uh, you know, human beings have been around, we understand that we have a body. And we understand that our body is a unit. So he just, he, you know, he, he's hammering home something here that is so obvious, it's, a, it's as plain as the nose on your face. <laughs> no laughing. Oh, that's my problem right here. Um, so so he, wants to, he, he wants us to think about your body. I mean, you can, every part of your body is important to you. You could probably get by without chunks of it, and people do. You know, we lose our ear, we lose an eye, um, we lose a, a foot or, a, you know, an arm, but we're not happy about it, <laughs> and we miss it. And, and because we know that the whole thing works as a, as a functioning unit, and when one part is missing, we really have to go hard to compensate for that. So he says, that's what the body of Christ is. And he's telling us that, that, you know, now that Christ has withdrawn his bodily presence, uh, now he, he, that is represented, his bodily presence is represented through us, through his followers. And so we all have different parts to that body. So some of us are fingers and some of us are toes and some of us are noses and some of us are ears and all that kind of stuff. So, <coughs> <coughs> I've got to go home. Oh. Okay, so I'm just going to go through some of the things that get said in this passage. You could mine this passage for a long time. But, uh, so the foot be, c cannot say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. Right? Uh, um, that would be ridiculous. I mean, when we think about it as a human body, if the foot said, I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, we think, well, that's just stupid. <laughs> but people get that kind of idea, silly notion in their heads when they look around the, the church, if you will, or the body of Christ and say, well, I'm not like that one, so I guess I'm not really part of it. So they de we demean ourselves, or we denigrate our importance to the body of Christ. Um, I, I got thinking about this. I mean, Paul, I don't know that Paul is actually trying to represent certain gifts when he talks about feet and hands and stuff, but I, I like, just for fun, I kind of was doing that in my head. So, I mean, what, are, what is the foot? What is the hand? The hand of the body of Christ Maybe it was, it's, you know, that which reaches out to others with love and with compassion and with generosity. Maybe that which, is, which greets others and touches them and hugs them, you know. Um, it, uh, and the foot, <laughs> the foot doesn't do those things as much. But the foot moves the body around, moves the gospel around. It might be like the apostles and the evangelists and, and those who brought the gospel, you know, they, they move it because they, they are the feet. Um, so if we're not that one who is, you know, who is really sociable and always welcoming people and, and just, you know, always gregarious and such, that may be the hand. 
uh, and we, we look and say, man, that's, that's what we should be doing, and I'm not doing that, so I'm not part of the body. It may not be your gift. <laughs> that's the kind of thing he's saying. Um, you, do as much, you do what you can, but so, some people are less that inclined to that than others, right? Because I am not an eye, says the year, I do not belong to the body. Ridiculous, of course. Ridiculous. Um, what is the ear? Hmm, I got thinking about that. What could that be a metaphor for? And what, what I like, this is just me wildly making stuff up, by the way, <laughs> which I want to do. <coughs> I think the ear is kind of like what we call pastoral care because it's, you know, one of the biggest things we do when we're seeking to bless each other and, and, and build relationships and uh, get to know each other is we have to listen. As you've probably heard this saying, because it gets said a lot, there's, there's a reason God gave us two ears and one mouth. <laughs> Use them in the same proportion, right? So we're to listen twice as much as we speak, maybe more. Uh, so, and it, basically when, when, we're, when we're seeking to bless someone or help them when they're going through something, most of what we can do is listen to them and let them know we, we, we actually are, are hearing and we're sympathetic you know, to what they're doing. A lot of times, there's nothing we can do for people other than that. But that's enough. Because people need to know they're loved and people care about their circumstances. Uh, and, you know, it, we might be able to do something else, but we may not. So if we can listen to people and, and sympathize with them and pray for them, that's huge. And that, uh, to me, I think that's kind of what the ear does. The eye, hmm. I, I got thinking about this. So, you know, in the Old Testament, there was these prophets. There's another name for those prophets. Seers. Anyway, I'm probably going to get in trouble with my theological friends over here. But <laughs> you know, so, so maybe that, that, that could be a metaphor. The, the eye is that which sees. And maybe there are those among us who see a little bit more deeply than others. You know, we, we, we kind of... Uh, have, have insight <laughs> insight into some of the mysteries that others might not have that God has given to us that we might share it with others so a teacher or an apostle or somebody might have you know might be the I'm going to shut this thing up no yes <laughs> good grief not anymore um, so, so the point is, whatever, whatever the gift might be, it's entirely God's gift to someone. It's not something they can brag about. Uh, it's something he gave to the one who has insight, and the one who has pastoral care cannot say, well, I don't have, I'm not all super insightful, but I'm a good listener. <laughs> I'm not an eye. I do not belong to the body. Ridiculous. Um, now, you may not catch this right away, but this is, this is, uh, this is the body. See, that's got the head at the top. And the little hands at the side, and then the feet down at the bottom. I know it's sad that I have to explain that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be, right? So if the whole body's an ear, everybody's an ear, everybody, that's all we are, just listeners, you know, what, what, we're missing out on something. <laughs> where would the sense of smell be? And I thought, of course, I thought about, what's the sense of smell? <laughs> what might that represent? And there's actually one of the gifts in the list of gifts, which we talked about last week. It's called discernment of spirits. So when you smell things, there's some that can smell better than others. Do you notice this? That are really sensitive to smells, just humanly speaking. I'm not one of them. I worked in a tire factory for about a year and a half, and I think the rubber, the rubber smell burned out my olfactory sense. My wife is not the same. She smells stuff a mile away. And, you know, it's very sensitive to perfumes and scents of all kinds. So, I, you know, that, to me that kind of represents the possibility of, uh, um, you know, kind of possibly, the, you know, a, a sense that others don't have that just picks up on things like the discernment of spirits he talks about earlier. So someone that, that can tell that even though everything looks great, there's just something off. <laughs> you know, there's something off with the attitude. There's something off with, uh, you know, uh, other people think, oh, that sounds great, but... In their gut, they say, you know, that it's not quite right. Discernment of spirit. So maybe that's what this gift of smell is. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. This is important, but in fact, he says, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. 
blanket statement. So whatever your, whatever your job is, whatever your gift is, whatever your position in the body is, God put you there. He gave that to you, and uh, you know, so you're part of it. And it's his, his choice. Um, so you know, if I'm a, a speaker, a teacher, it's his choice. It's not mine. <laughs> If you're whatever, an administrator, or if you're a, you know, a, a carer or a helper or whatever we are, it's, uh, it's God in his sovereignty who has decided what we shall be and how, how that will work. So it's a kind of a blanket statement about the sovereignty of God, the power of God. This thing doesn't stick very good. Running out of editing, Run, out of editing possibilities. So the other side of the coin is... Um, so in the first instance, we may be demeaning ourselves. Well, I'm not one of these, so I guess I'm not part of the body. This, this, is, the, this is kind of the other direction. We could say, well, I'm so, I'm so important that I don't really need anybody else. Um, and, you know, can the eye say to the hand, I don't need you, because it's so full of itself? Or can the head say to the foot, I don't need you? Well, of course, ridiculous. In, in our bodies, we, we know that's ridiculous. So he's saying it's ridiculous in... Um, with respect to the Church of Christ. So that, that gave me pause to think a little bit about what parts of the body may, may be tempted to think that way. And the first thing that jumped to my mind was preachers. <laughs> <coughs> Since they've been, they've been kind of instructed and expected to do everything a lot. And uh, uh, that's dangerous. I think that, that has taken away from the efficacy of the Church of Christ. When we, we, we put a whole lot of power in the hands of somebody and expect them to do it all, uh, you know, that, that's, that's not the way Christ set it up. Um, but, you know, it's part, partly the way the model of the church has, has come out over the last several hundreds of years. Uh, and, you know, I sort of get it because I'm in that position. <laughs> and uh, it, not everybody has a chance to go to school, for instance, and study theology and, and Bible and you know, pastoral care and preaching and uh, church history and all that stuff that I got to do. So, so you, get, you get people that can do that and have done that. And then the idea is that they would come back and share it with, share what they've learned with, with everybody else. And uh, which is great, as long as we're not think that we're indispensable, you know. <laughs> we're, we're the be all and the end all because we've had that training. So it's, uh, it's kind of a, I'm betwixt and between on this. I'm suspicious that that, that model of church where we've, we've kind of had the one, you know, kind of leader who has done everything, um, has one of, the, one of the reasons the church has declined. Because people do not find, if we don't find our place, all of us find our place in the church, it doesn't work right. You know, if you never use your feet, if you never use your knees, if you never use your eyes and your ears, if you just use your mouth, you're going to atrophy. Atrophy? <laughs> atrophy. So that, that's one. Then an, another example might be the worship team, you know, they could get really full of themselves. <laughs> I think they're, they're, they're it, right? Yeah. And, you know, sometimes that happens. The thing is, whenever you're up front and in front of everybody, there's always that temptation and, and to say, you know, we're the most important thing going on here. Um, and, you know, if, the, if this great rock and roll music is, is working, then nothing else really matters because that's, that's the big deal here. Is that really what the church is about? No. I mean, it's a useful and fun thing to do. But we have all kinds of different music. The choir could think the same. We could say, well, we're, we're so good, you know. Um, <laughs> um, so, so I'm just using that as an example. When, once we get up front, there's always a bit of a temptation to say, well, I don't need the rest of them. And it's simply not true. He, he goes on here to, to talk a little bit, and I didn't have any pictures for it. The parts that we think, on the, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. So the weaker parts and the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. So in our bodies, there are certain parts, we call them the privates. And we treat them with special modesty. And they don't get seen by everybody else, right? And that's as it should be. Um, but uh, he, he's saying in the, in the body of Christ, there are parts that are less presentable perhaps, that are, are, less, that are weaker, and he says, in, in the body of Christ, it ought to be, it, it ought to happen that, that we give more honor to those who are weaker. You know, whether it's someone with a handicap, whether it's someone who's elderly, whether it's someone that's sick, um, our love and our care for them uh, should be paramount. 
should be at the top of the list kind of thing. So that's basically what he's saying. For God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it. So there should be no division in the body. But that in its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one member suffers, all suffer together. That's as it should be. So if someone dies, if someone's, someone, something awful happens to somebody, we're to be with those you know, who are impacted uh, and, and sharing in that grief and in that sorrow. And I, you know, I see that in the church. I think it's a, health, it's a healthy thing. It's like a funeral. When there's a funeral uh, and the family is grieving, the church ought to be gathered around these people, comforting them and, and just you know, being with them, just being there. You notice that there's a bit, there's a bit of a, a tendency to not have funerals anymore. I don't know if you, you picked up on that. And I, I, I kind of feel that that's a little bit of a not healthy process. Because we are family. So this is kind of telling us that the church is basically a family. And when, we're, when we, something goes wrong in the family or someone gets hurt, you know, we are to gather around that person and share that suffering or sorrow with them. All those people. And that's when the church is working right, that's, that's what it does. That's what I see most of the time in our churches, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. Um, and if one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now, that's the Governor General's Award, actually, there. Um, uh, we may not get the Governor General's Award, but, you know, I've noticed various ones of you over the years have, have been honored like that. You've received various awards. But it's not just that. It's, you know, we rejoice with those who rejoice. It says elsewhere in the scripture. So if someone has a new grandbaby or a new baby, someone gets married, someone, uh, someone graduates, someone gets a new job, you know, things that are good, things that are worth celebrating. Someone turns 90 <laughs> and, uh, you know, we get, get together and have a party. That, that's supposed to be, we're supposed to be doing that too. So just, we rejoice with those who rejoice. We weep with those who weep. That's the normal family life in the church of Christ. So that's a little glimpse, I think, of what he's talking about in this passage. Um, that we're called into, that we are, that's the way we are in Christ. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. We're all part of the body, with different things to do. Shall we pray?